Hello, and welcome to another edition of Conversation with the Socials. I am here with Catherine Tomaso, Tomasello. Is that how you, how you pronounce it, Tomasello? Tomasello, yeah. And uh, she uh, is soon to be filing to go against um, Chuck Schumer, right? Yeah. Uh, and what district is he in anyway? Well, he's a senator, so he represents the entire state along with um, Patrick Donovan and um, Kirsten Gillibrand. Oh. Or I used to call her uh, uh, Kirsten Kill My Brand. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, she was doing awful in, in debate. That's why I was saying that. Anyway, um, I did, by the way, did you happen to uh, see the, uh, the third party debate that happened about maybe a week ago now? No, I can't say that I did. I um, <laughs> I honestly missed it because I was um, otherwise predisposed. And oh, uh, uh, it is on YouTube, so you can always look it up. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can. Yes, uh, they pretty much featured like every single like uh, uh, FEC uh, recognized uh, political party uh, running the president, uh, a presidential nominee. Um, I, I think I, I'm biased. I'm a, I'm a Howard Hawkins supporter. I voted for him uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, well, thanks for but, the support. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, uh, the Tea Party dictatorship has got to end. Um, but he was he was one he was the only one on the stage that wore a mask. Two, he was the only one that was actually precise and detailed in his plans. Uh, Gloria did what she could in regards to how she was saying things, but she was distracted by flies and didn't wear a mask and yeah. Uh, yeah, not wearing a mask, uh, not a well, good idea. Well, nobody on there was wearing a mask except for Holly. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, one of them. Uh, and just, just so I can get away from this topic of the interviews by you, not them. Um, uh, one of them uh, I found out uh, had a work attributed to Donald Trump's uh, campaign. Okay. Uh, that, that was a guy from the Mighty Ducks. Mm -hmm. I don't know his name. Pierce? Not the last name is Pierce, but anyway. Um, kind of blanking on the name. Yeah. The only, the only ones I remember are the ones that actually made an impact. Anyway. Um, so you're running, so you'll be soon to run, be officially running for, against uh, uh, Chuck Schumer, who was as corporatist as you can get. Um, takes I don't know how much money from I don't know how many corporations. Well, uh, honestly, the reasons I'm running against him go beyond that, beyond wh where he gets his funding. Because right now there are two bills in the Senate that have existed for a very long time, for a number of years now. One of them is the Green New Deal. And the other one is Senate Bill uh, 1129, and that would pass Medicare for all on the federal level so that we can get every single man, woman, and child in the country covered. And according to the World Health Organization, the one tool that we need that any country can have to battle against this pandemic and save as many lives as humanly possible is some form of universal health care, which obviously the United States is, it's one tool that we are lacking that we do not have and not only I mean it would be bad enough if he wasn't supporting or co-sponsoring either of those bills because they both have to do with our own survival especially here in New York State mm -hmm. but he's actively blocking bill, um, votes in order to pass those two pieces of legislation mm -hmm. like for example Bill S1129 the Medicare for All bill that's actually existed in the Senate since April of last year. And in between, in between that time and the time when this pandemic reached our shores, yeah. if we had passed it, we would have had the opportunity to open up hundreds of thousands, if not um, millions of rural hospitals that have been shut down as a result of staying in the for-profit healthcare system. Because the thing about hospitals that are privately run, they only stay open if they can turn over a big enough profit margin. And if they don't, then health insurance companies basically cut them out of their network so that way people who are on those health insurance plans cannot afford to go there. And so they ultimately shut down. Some people in my district have to drive 30 minutes to an hour in order to get to the closest hospital. 
That's why we have this thing in Western New York called Mercy Flight. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it before, but Mercy. it's a service that it's basically, it's called Mercy Flight. And basically what it is, is it's a, a public service that um, EMTs offer to Western New Yorkers in order to bring them to hospitals in, um, in the city and downtown Buffalo, which is where most of our hospitals are run um, from rural areas. I'm talking about places like Batavia, Medina, all of these places where people have to drive for 20 minutes to a half an hour to get anywhere, including a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's a free sir. That's a service that they offer them. But the thing is, is we wouldn't have to offer that service if we had all of these hospitals that were already open. And if we passed Medicare for all, we could reopen all of these rural hospitals that already exist and literally start saving lives before the end of next month. Mm -hmm. We can staff them with doctors, nurses, lab techs, ventilators, personal protective equipment, and they would it would end up saving millions of people um just over the course of two years uh now i think the problem uh with getting the medicare for all right now i think uh, to begin with that uh, we would be using the uh the medicare uh model right to uh to um to, to get the payments uh, made to hospitals when a patient comes in to see a physician. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, I, what was it? Um, I want to say, is it Tom Wells? I think Tom Wells, uh, someone who uh, lost a Florida race, a progressive, uh, informed me that according to uh, Medicare Part D, um, the, the language within the legislation prevents the government from negotiating down prices from pharmaceuticals. So I would think on that front, we would have to uh, take that part of language out and may, and put in like a uh, screen clear of uh, renegotiating prices within the market system involving uh, Medicare as well and pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies and hospitals. Well, the thing is, is um, with Medicare, you, um, there are, um, prices that, that there's a number of medications that are covered under Medicare and um, they they do negotiate those prices already um, so that way they can be um, offered to the general public at either no at either a low cost or no cost and so if we expanded Medicare that would just really embolden the um, the chances that we have to negotiate prices down so that way you know people wouldn't have to do things like ration their insulin or cut their pills in half mm -hmm. in order to you know make them last longer because you know earlier in the month oh i had to pay rent i can't go homeless so i paid rent and now i got to cut my pills in half to make them last longer until my prescription can be filled that wouldn't happen under a Medicare for all system because Medicare would be so well um, funded on a national level that we would be able to negotiate those prices down. Okay, but I mean, when we still have to take the language at, at, the, at that portion of Medicare in order to uh, facilitate the openness of negotiations? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be objective. I wouldn't be, a, I wouldn't object to it at all. No, I'm, I'm saying or to start the process when we, when we have to take that part out in case there's any objections from the Republicans, for instance, who uh, even when even with the fact that ACA is a Republican uh, Harris Foundation's uh, um, uh, studied uh, health care uh, system, uh, that was even being voted down by Republicans. And Republicans like that, but they don't like the policies in, uh, and that's involved in it. Well, the thing is, is that passing legislation um, that benefits um, the constituency that I'm trying to represent, it's not dependent on um, negotiating with Republicans or Democrats. It's, ne it's contingent upon public outcry. Like for example, we can't get um, Medicare for all passed, we can't get the Green New Deal passed or universal basic income or universal housing passed unless there is a certain amount of prolonged out public outcry from 
um, from the people who we want to, from the people I want to represent. Mm -hmm. And we can't pass legislation that would allow Medicare to, um, that would allow Medicare to negotiate for drug prices, get them cheaper, get them to a point where people can afford them, as well as, you know, basically eliminating private health insurance. We can't get that legislation passed unless we have the support of the public. We need people who are going to be willing to turn out in massive numbers, because that's really the only way that things in this country get passed. We saw it happen with um, most notably the Voting Rights Act in 1965. At that time, we had President Lyndon B. Johnson, who was a avid Dixiecrat. And when you say the word Dixiecrat, it's synonymous with people who actively support segregation. The, um, the Confederate flag that you see most Republicans flying around nowadays was actually invented by the Democratic Party in order to lure Republicans into their, into their party by saying, hey, we support segregation just like you. And, yeah. and um, you know, we managed to get the Voting Rights Act passed, which guaranteed people of color the right to vote in this country when we had a segregationist in the White House during the Jim Crow era. That did not happen by accident. It didn't. It only happened because people protested, showed up at sit-ins, um, went on marches, and made demands. Mm -hmm. we, passed, we passed that legislation during an incredibly um, tumultuous time in American history because people realized how powerful they were and how much they could influence legislation just by raising up their voices. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't pass legislation in this country because people in Congress or in the White House suddenly grow a conscience and decide to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. We only got, we, the only reason I can vote because I am a woman and I, there's, you know, a lot of people in this country who weren't, who are, are like me, who weren't able to vote you know, just a hundred years ago. And the only reason we were able to pass the 19th amendment is because hundreds of millions of people turned out in hundreds of cities all over the country and even all over the world in order to make those demands. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be, to answer your question and get back to it, passing mm -hmm. Medicare for all is not going to be up to me. It's, it, I, I want to pass Medicare for all because I recognize the fact that it would save tens of thousands of lives every single year. I recognize the fact that people wouldn't die from um, treatable illnesses that, they otherwise, that otherwise would be a lot less expensive to treat if they had gone into the doctors in the first place. Like my grandfather never went into the doctors, never spoke to anybody. And one day he died suddenly from colon cancer and now I am, my dad and my aunts and uncles are paying the price for that because they have to go in and get um, cancer screenings every single year because that happened. Mm -hmm. I, I understand exactly the kind of impact that passing this piece of legislation would have on the American people, but it's not going to be up to me or the Democrats or the Republicans. When I'm in office, I am going to be betting and staking my reputation on the fact that I can get voter turnout after the election, not before. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and have you spoken with anybody with uh, Black Lives Matter? I, I'm, I'm, I, I wish, um, <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, I just began my campaign this past year and unfortunately because my midterm, the midterm election that I'm running in isn't for another two years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how much of a stake they would be willing to um, place in my campaign until I have the opportunity to build up more support. But to, you know, just for the record, mm -hmm. I um, do support abolishing the police. And I also support um, reparations for adults, descendants of slavery, as well as indigenous people. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that would help me get an endorsement from Black Lives Matter. I would be honored to have that kind of an endorsement because 
I see, I see what's happening to people in communities of color, not just with, um, with, you know, it, um, interactions that they have with the police, which are horrendous to say the very least. And they honestly, I don't even know how any mom is coping with the fact that they know that if their son or daughter goes out, they might not come back. I don't know how anybody copes with that. It's messed up beyond belief. But anyhow, one of the things that I recognize in my home state of New York is that even though we have the most strict emission standards of any state in the entire country, we still suffer from the worst air quality of any other state in the union. Now, why is that? We have the strictest um, air um, emission standards of anybody else. Why, why is our air so poor? And I recognize the fact that when they measure air quality, it's worse in, in, the, in poorer neighborhoods that are predominantly inhabited by people of color. So um, I recognize this. And part of the reason I wanna pass the Green New Deal is because even though New York State has very str stringent emission standards, there are other states to the west that are in the Gulf, or, um, in the polar, um, like there's this air current that comes down from the Arctic Circle mm -hmm. and it pulls all of those emissions that the other states like Montana and Wyoming emit that don't have such strict air quality um, um, emission standards. And it forces that air mm -hmm. over and across the country and it seems to collect here in New York State. Mm. And um, there's this, there's um, this thing called fine particulate matter. It's mostly produced by wildfires. Um, and we, we've seen pictures from the West Coast, from California and Oregon. Mm -hmm. We know how terrible these fires are. And the, um, the polar vortex is coming down from Canada, down through those Western states, picking up all of that, all of that ash and all of that soot not just from the wildfires, but also from these factories that don't have very good emission standards. Mm -hmm. And they are blowing it east to our state and to other states. And we're paying a heavy price for that because even if you increase those fine particulate matters to a concentration of four parts per meter, mm -hmm. it, it can actually, or no, 10, par 10 parts per meter it can actually increase the number of heart attacks that people suffer from by 4%. Mm. And it's because all of these emissions are having such a, are, are just basically being compounded by all of the, um, all of the ash that we are seeing being released into the atmosphere and, um, and deposited into Eastern states. I mean, it's no picnic for people on the West Coast, bear that in mind, yeah. but it's, um, it's being compounded by the fact that we are dealing with the emissions that other states have, that other states are putting out there. And that's why I wanna pass the Green New Deal because we need, to, we need to stop polluting our air. We need to stop polluting our water, our, our soil and we need to take advantage of the fact that the air, um, that the solar energy um, industry is actually expanding right now, even with the economic downturn. You know, it's one of the fastest growing industries in the entire country, and we need to take advantage of that and, and save the planet. Yeah. Right. Uh you're right about that. Uh, and everything you said is on point, I believe. Um, now, uh, where is the state on ranked choice voting? What's that? Where is the state on ranked choice voting? Good question. Well, so far, we have some headway. We have some good news to report. We have ranked choice voting that has been passed throughout New York City um, in all of the boroughs. And that affects all local, state, and federal um, and federal elections. Sorry, my mind blanked out for a second. Okay. And um, 
so we have some headway there. New York City is by far the most densely populated part of the state. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have ranked choice voting that has been passed there um, is, it's, it, it's nothing to shake a stick at. You know, it didn't happen by accident. And the fact that we do have it and we're just working right now with assembly bill in uh, the New York State Legislature, um, it, it's, it's got some, I mean, it definitely has some backing. It has a precedent that has come before it that is, you know, kind of streamlining the, um, the process. And right now, Maine has rank, the entire state of Maine has ranked choice voting, which definitely helps um, my, my fellow Twitterer, uh, Lisa Savage, who is running in Maine. And um, even though she's not, um, even though she is not being um, advertised in the polls, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be pretty hard to ignore her after we see the results from that election come next month. Yeah. And, and, but you go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say I don't know how accurate uh, Wikipedia I was gonna say WikiLeaks uh, Wikipedia uh, is, but I looked up the uh, the membership ranking for uh, for Green for the Green Party. It's not very good. We need we need to get that up as it were as far as the part goes. I think a lot of the people that were uh, that were Bernie Sanders fans that departed the uh, Democratic. Uh, uh, Party uh, went to more the um, socialist party like the SPUSA, the uh, SAs, and other and other um, socialist type parties. Um, now, the one good thing about that is, is Howie Hawkins actually has the endorsement and nomination to SPUSA as well as SA as of recent. Um, he will, I believe, get the majority of the membership uh, there in regards to uh, uh, when they vote. Uh, but I, I would like to actually find out how uh, membership can be put back up. So do you have any thoughts on that? I do. Um, well, one of the things that we need to work on in New York State is our organizational skills. We definitely need um, more people to become involved. We need more volunteers. We need people who can advertise and help us become more mainstream because I um, I went out um, uh, I guess you could say canvassing during um, my uh, oh it's um, a Fridays for Future event that I that I do that I try to do at least once a month and basically it's where you it's called a climate strike and that at this climate strike. I tried to pass out as much information about Howie Hawkins and Angela Walker as I could mm -hmm. to help, uh, and I helped get um, people registered to vote. And uh, one of the things that I w that I noticed from people that I talked to is that they had never actually heard of Howie Hawkins before, even though he is the presidential nominee for, you know, the highest office in the land. Um, so we definitely have an advertising issue. We definitely need to work with voter outreach more and we definitely need more people who um who can see our platform and see it widely advertised but one good thing that i can say um, about our platform is that after the first presidential debate which was i didn't watch it but uh, it was very according to reports I didn't miss very much, and um, it was basically a poop show. Yeah, I mean, it was. It didn't really sound, based on the clips that I saw, it didn't sound like much of a debate at all. I mean, no. most most presidential debates, even in the primaries, don't really sound like like debates. Like they don't pick a topic and then just stick to it. Well, it, I mean, uh, I I did watch it uh, to to most ex uh, to the most I could. Um, first of all, I believe uh, Trump had COVID at that time, uh, but uh, thankfully enough, he was he was far far away enough from Biden that I don't think Biden got it. But he, but I do believe he did have it uh, during the debate uh, because I, yeah. that's what I that's the impression I got as well. Uh, but the good thing about it is, for once, uh, I saw a moderator actually push push against. 
uh, the, uh, the uh, candidates. Now, the Fox News guy, but at least the guy you just rather know about, uh, does have a journal a, a, a journalistic uh, degree, as far as I know of, uh, Chris Wallace. Uh, but to the point where he, the system is so bad, Fox News, who has had a really good history of being right wing, uh, is making MSNBC and other uh, uh, cable news shows uh, look like liars, um, which they, for the most part, are to certain extent. To, to, oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not talking to you, my son. Honey, can you go upstairs, please? <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to. Uh, no, it's okay. I, I was not directed at you. After that real life. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so uh, do you have, I mean, if you if you are successful in the race in a couple of years, do you have any pre-prepared legislation that, that you would want to introduce other than Green New Deal and other than Medicare for All? Yeah, I mean, I have um, 24, um, of 24 issues on my um, platform that I really want to address. Come on, honey, go on, go on. I'll be right out, okay? All right. And uh, yeah, I got a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a two-year-old. It's a crazy house in here. Um, but yeah, I one of the things that i have worked on with my community in order to pass boys boys you gotta go upstairs please oh goodness <laughs> anyways anyways um one of the things that i've worked with my local um school district on is actually passing um amendments to the curriculum that would address one of the silent killers in this country. And one of the things that I, and honestly, it's not talked about enough by anybody, including people in Congress, specifically because this issue is so heavily stigmatized. And that is the issue of youth suicide. Um, it's the second leading cause of death for children ages 10 to 12. And it's actually on track for becoming the number one killer of, eight, of children ages 10 and up by the end of this year. Mm. And, um, you know, because everybody's isolating, people, you know, kids aren't going outside. They're not able to go to school as much. And, um, and they just can't, you know, they're not getting the help and the services that they need. And they're isolating more um, one of the thing, one of the pieces of legislation I would like to um, introduce would address that problem the same way that I it has been addressed um, by the Robert E. Coleman Elementary School in Maryland, in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of this program before. It was on. No, Charlie, you gotta go upstairs, honey. Go on, go on, go on, go on. He's upstairs. Go upstairs. Okay. Well, uh, just so you know, we only have a few more minutes anyway, so. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This okay. could have gone a whole lot worse, but it could have gone better, too. No worries. Uh, you did a great job so far. And and, and uh, we'll, we'll bring you back on in a, a week or two uh, so you can talk more in depth uh, of your uh, legislation. Leg okay. Legislation. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> your legislation. They want to, uh, that you would want to uh, bring into bring down to the house um, or bring to the house, whatever. Um, let's see. Technically, it would be the Senate, not the House, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, I thank you for being on. Uh, uh, we'll uh, get together again, uh, talk more on Twitter and other stuff of that nature. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so could you? Uh, Tape a few audio uh, things I can I can also put on uh, my solo podcast when I don't have interviews I can kind of sneak sneak that in. Yeah, sure. Do you want just audio or video? Uh, audio. Okay, I All can right. do that. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, for joining me today. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, for me to be the first interviewer uh, or be the first interview of you uh, uh, of your uh, your campaign uh, or future campaign. I should say. Having me. I, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity, honestly. Yeah, thank you very much for, for being on. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, schedule another interview. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Same here. I hope you have a good night. And uh, uh, cool kids.
<laughs> Thank you. I'll send you a picture of them. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.